your forecast first. Sponsored by Matax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Finally, we are getting some rain across parts of central Illinois. Right now, that rain can find mainly into portions of Coles and Douglas County, but the showers are moving through. And that's actually kept our temperatures down a bit. Reading is into the lower 70s right now. And eventually, we're going to see some lower humidity values to go along with these cooler temperatures. But we've got to get through some of this rain first. So as we go throughout this evening, we are expecting more showers to be around, which is some great news. Those things have been so dry as of late. When we come back, we'll let you know how the rest of the week shapes up, including the upcoming Labor Day weekend forecast. WCA3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA3 News. People going out, um, not really socially distancing, um, and just living like normal. It's becoming a problem on the U of I campus why two students have been suspended and a fraternity's now in trouble. I'm sad for the city as a whole. And four people were shot in less than 24 hours. What city leaders say they're not going to do in response. Could Illinois crack down on bad cops? What changes black lawmakers say could end systemic racism? You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6. Isolation does not mean that they can go to class or they can go to grocery shop. Two U of I students and an entire fraternity are suspended for breaking the university's COVID-19 safety rules. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. On top of that, around 100 students are being disciplined for their behavior over the weekend. WCIA 3's Courtney Bunting joins us now. So, Courtney, what did they do? Well, Paul, it's a mixture of different violations. All of these are related to the COVID-19 orders for campus behavior. Some of them aren't just aren't communicating with public health. Others are holding parties or violating quarantine. I don't want anyone to go to like the party and like don't tell anyone about it and spread the you know virus to everyone. The U of I is handling dozens of cases of students who aren't following COVID-19 safety orders. Some for holding parties and others for breaking quarantine orders. Around 100 students and organizations are being disciplined for how they acted over the weekend. I see people going out to the bar still and I know they've changed the regulations, but it's still very like concerning to me um, to see that many people going out, um, not really socially distancing um, and just living like normal. CU public health leaders are in touch with all students who test positive or who are exposed. We again remind them that it is a requirement to stay at home. We also tell them that it is not optional. It is a mandate. If students keep violating those orders, that's when the university gets involved. Health district leaders say people need to remember how important it is that everyone follows orders. The reason for doing isolation and quarantine is because we know this person is a confirmed positive or a confirmed exposure and they are infectious. And so if they are going to be around other people, then the whole concept of public health prevention is of no use. I talked to a university spokesperson who told me some students haven't returned calls or messages from public health. So student affairs, student affairs is reaching out to them. So they're telling those students that if they don't respond and continue to not respond to public health, they could be suspended. Paul. It seems like a pretty uh, hefty financial penalty given the fact that they're paying tuition to not follow the public health rules. Yeah definitely slows down the process of their classes as well. So a lot of things involved in those penalties. Absolutely. All right, Courtney, thanks. Well, a fourth person in Vermilion County has died from coronavirus. The 68-year-old man who was in the hospital for a week died yesterday. The county also had two preschoolers test positive for COVID-19. There are almost 1,500 new cases in that state. That brings, uh, in the state rather, that brings the state's total number of infections over 236,000. 39 more people have died in Illinois, which includes includes several people from central Illinois. The state has lost over 8,000 people to COVID-19. Black lawmakers in Illinois called for an end to systemic racism today. Our Capitol Bureau Chief Mark Maxwell is live in the Capitol tonight. So Mark, the Illinois Legislative Black Caucus staged the event just moments before a hearing on police use of force. And Paul, good evening. The Black Caucus echoed many calls from Black Lives Matter activists who have made the case this year 
that systemic racism goes far beyond just those police encounters uh, with black Americans, but also said that uh, they often pervade many parts of our society, from our schools to housing to our health care systems. The Senate committee held the first of many of these ongoing discussions, examining the role of police and their use of force. But the Black Caucus also highlighted many of those other areas in society. They held that press conference today in Chicago, but also responded to calls from local activists who have marched in the streets here in Springfield this year, organizing around uh, many events this summer, calling for all of us to see each other and treat each other as true equals. I think we really have to work on the mindset and the culture that is in with, within police departments. Um, sometimes I, it, it appears that there is a fear of black people in general, even if we're not doing anything that can that that should be considered um, an act of aggression or anything like that. If you just have a general basis of you fear them more, you're more likely to react negatively. Expert witnesses at that special Senate committee hearing called for a tracking database to monitor when police use force, not just deadly force, but any force at all that would give some increased oversight. Uh, Senator LG Sims, who chairs that committee, says that, uh, yes, yeah, sometimes systemic racism is complex and hard to find. It's, it's uh, woven into the fabric of our community, but sometimes it's also overt and simple. You can see it. Some of the critics at that hearing today uh, cite, cited concerns about reports that white supremacists or their sympathizers had tried to find their way into police departments, perhaps applying for jobs. And many of those critics also said police unions uh, have too often fought against oversight of the recruitment process of new officers officers or the training of those officers once they wear the badge. Paul? Yeah, certainly something that I'm sure this conversation will continue later on into the year, and I know you'll follow it. Mark Maxwell tonight in Springfield. Mark, thanks. Well, this is a follow-up now. Emotion and tension were heard in the voices of protesters outside the Iroquois County Jail this afternoon. They are demanding answers for the death of inmate Andre Maiden. He and another inmate, Jason Fancher, died last week. Their causes of death remain unknown. Maiden's family is still questioning how he died after the autopsy done last week. The sheriff's office and state police have not commented on that investigation. Champaign police are investigating gunfire. It happened just before 2 near the intersection of Duncan and Daniel. Police searched the neighborhood and found a gun. They continue to search for those involved. Here's an update now. Four people were hurt after two shootings in two days in Decatur. One was Sunday night, the other last night, both on South Webster Street. Now some are wondering what the city's doing to combat the violence. W WCI 3's Gabrielle Cook is live in the newsroom tonight. So, Gabrielle, how is the city handling this? Well, those shootings come as the city council recently discussed its budget plans for first responders. And I spoke with a community member who lives on Clay Street where Sunday's shooting happened. As she says, she's simply tired of the violence. Nothing has ever been like this on this street since I've been here. Because this was my home house, but I rented it out now and I'm living in the other block. And I've never seen anything like this. Barbara Holder owns a property right across the street from the shooting on Clay Street. That shooting happened on Sunday, and a man and woman were sent to the hospital. Just 19 hours later, another shooting happened on South Webster in Cleveland. Two people were hurt, but their conditions have not been released. Holder has lived in the neighborhood for 50 years and says she's seen the way violence has changed the area. The young people and the kids growing up, they have to endure all of this. And it's just not good. City Council member David Horn says combating the violence starts with funding for first responders. I'm sad for the city as a whole. And we definitely need highly trained, skilled individuals to respond to these crimes and other crimes that we're experiencing in the city. Monday, the city decided they will not cut any budgets for the city's fire and police department. They say it's because of the increased violence. In 2020, there has been a significant increase in the amount of shootings in the city of Decatur. In fact, through the month of July, there has been over a doubling in the number of shootings compared to last year. Decatur has also seen a number of shootings this past month. Since August 17th, there have been nine shootings where people were either have either been hurt or killed and 10 were hurt and two people have died. All right, Gabrielle, thanks. There will be no Big Ten football season this fall. Why President Trump spoke with the Big Ten commissioner today, also tonight.
The solar panels do contain some uh, chemicals and other toxic ingredients. Hey, it's a place where corn and soybeans used to grow. Why one person believes the solar farm is the wrong thing to put in its place. Well, we've got rain falling across central Illinois here tonight after it was a cooler day because of those clouds and rain showers. Much needed as well, but it really depends upon where you were as to how much you received. When we come back, more about the rain, the cooler temperatures, and we'll look at that weekend forecast when we come back.